Hello everybody and welcome to this second video illustrating the concepts of my mechatronics course. In this one we're going to focus on the repair of a defective optical encoder. Here you have one of the DC motor kit we use in our laboratories, but the encoder attached to this motor is defective. To see it we first fit that encoder with a 5 volt signal between the ground and the VCC lines. And then we connect the probe of an oscilloscope between the ground and one of the encoder output channels. If you then turn the motor, you'll see that on this channel, you don't see anything happening when you move the shaft one way or the other. Just to check, we can try channel B, and it's exactly the same thing. We don't have any signal. To make sure that the oscilloscope is working, we observe the 5 volts from the power and yes, on the power supply line of the encoder we do have 5 volts. So that's clearly a faulty encoder. To make sure that everything is ok, we can double check with this other motor kit. I repeat the connection sequence, first the encoder power supply then the oscilloscope probe on channel A, and this time, when I turn the motor shaft, I see very well the square signal, as it's supposed to be. We can also visualize the other channel simultaneously, which allows us to observe the quadrature nature of the output, with the 90 degree phase shift, again, as is expected. So all this shows us that this kit is actually working very well, but the previous one had a defect. At this point I can remove the cables I've been using. Now, well, we're going to have to take that defective kit apart to see what the problem is and how to fix it. That's what we are doing here at 200% speed. I remove the motor housing and take it out from its support. This will allow me to access the optical encoder itself, which is attached to the motor, so I can inspect it both mechanically and electronically. I previously removed most of the screws, so this is going pretty fast. Now it is done, I have access to the encoder, namely that little box at the back of the motor. We are going to remove its plastic cover to see if there is any damage on the optical disc interrupting or not the light beam, which transforms the position information into a usable electrical signal. I'm fast forwarding here again this assembly. There's nothing very interesting or very complicated here. Now I remove the base of the encoder, and that encoder, by the way, is an ENC22 from the well known Maxon company. We see here the electronic circuit appearing, as well as the connector for the external ribbon cable. A first inspection seems to indicate that everything is fine. There is no indication of overheating, no burn marks whatsoever. Well, everything seems to be okay, so I'm continuing my dismantling process. We're now going to inspect the optical disc as soon as I remove these screws and this second housing I'm going through. And now I have access to the optical disc that you can see here very clearly on the screen. I check it, and as best as I can tell, everything looks perfect. There is no damage, which would be rather difficult to imagine, knowing that the surrounding case was perfectly intact. However, sometimes water, dust, or other contaminants may have infiltrated and damaged the optical disc inside the case, so that may be difficult to tell beforehand. I continue my disassembly, I will now remove the main circuit that includes all the components required for the interpretation of the optical signal, namely the phototransistors and the light emitter, typically an infrared LED. And since there seems to be no mechanical damage on the encoder, it is probably this circuit that is no longer working. 
Therefore, the logical thing we have to do here is to change this circuit and see if it solves our problem. And it is actually quite possible to destroy the circuit by, for example, subjecting it to a voltage on terminals for which it is not intended to, for instance to switch the power supply line and ground by accident, or to send a voltage too far beyond 5 volts. A simple misconnection like that can very easily destroy the circuit, so it's pretty common. We've had a few occurrences of these issues in the past with this type of encoder, so I was actually pretty sure from the beginning that the problem was coming from this circuit. While I am disassembling, you can also see, if you can zoom out on the screen, the actual reference of the circuit, which is very practical to find its replacement. That's a lot easier for us. Basically, you just have to type the serial number of the circuit in one of the online shops of electronic components like DigiKey, Mauser or Newark, whatever. In this example, I found the circuit on DigiKey and it's an HEDS9700E50. It's a small chip, but very common and made by Broadcom. I will put links to this circuit in the video description. I continue now with its removal, so I need to unsolder its legs from the PCB, so I can resolder a new one of the exact same type in its place. Now I am finished with the desoldering and the circuit is out of its board. I take this opportunity to have a look at it, but I do not see any apparent damage. The PCB also seems intact. I can now carefully clean the true holes of the PCB. This will make the new circuit much easier to insert. If you leave even a small blob of tin in these true holes, you will have a lot of difficulty to put the new circuit in place. So it is very important to clean the holes properly. Everything looks fine, I can put the old circuit away. This is the bag I received the new components in. As you will see, I did buy a spare. It's always a good idea, since it happens sometimes when you install a new component that you damage it, for instance by breaking one of its pins. Let's take one of these two new circuits out. I started here by trying to put the HEDS, HEDS. circuit on its PCB and place it back next to the optical disc but in the end it was actually quite difficult. The winning strategy for me was rather to set up the HEDS circuit directly on the optical disc in place and to screw it down so these two parts are perfectly in position and stable with respect to each other. Only then I soldered the pins again. This way I am absolutely certain that the alignment of the circuit with the optical disc and it attachment to the encoder housing are both perfect. This is the best strategy to resolder this component without having too much alignment problems. Once that's done, I can replace the plastic housings protecting the encoder and will be able to proceed with a new series of tests. It is very important at this point to make sure that the optical disc is perfectly positioned inside the groove of the HEDS circuit. If it's too close to one side or the other, we risk missing parts of the encoder signal. So you see me making small adjustments with the screwdriver. This optical disc can simply slide along the motor shaft. In fact, it is simply held by a small plastic sleeve whose diameter is slightly smaller than that of the motor shaft and it deforms when the optical disc is slid onto the shaft and the small clamping force generated that way combined with friction will prevent the disc from sliding. We are almost done with closing the housing back again only a few screws left and if you noticed I put all the screws on a plastic tray beside that is very helpful not to lose any of them. 
I have finished reassembling the case and now I reconnect the connection cable and once it's done I will be able to connect the power supply and the encoder channels to check if my repair has worked. I start like the first time by putting the ground and the VCC to the encoder and will then connect the oscilloscope probe again between the ground and channel A. I am now getting the cables out again, so we'll start with the power supply, here it is, the ground first, and then VCC, there we go. Now I'm getting the probe of the oscilloscope, yes, and the ground first again, connect the probe, we will see the signal stabilizing on the screen, and if I turn the shaft, immediately I see a square signal. I also double check the second channel, but normally if the first one has been repaired, the second one should be repaired as well. However, it is possible to have one leg not well soldered and a related channel not outputting the signal it should. No, in this case all is well, the encoder is repaired and this motor kit is 100% functional again. As we have seen, repairing an optical encoder by replacing its circuit is not very difficult and it is far cheaper than buying a new one. Thank you all and see you soon.